So welcome back to our 24 hours live stream event, uh, Jane Beyond uh, Conference. Um, we'll, uh, we'll be back with a presentation from Adam Nortia, Boost Sales and Help Your Online Store Thrive in 2020. Um, but before we start, just let me thank our sponsors, Plesk, um, who make it happen here and remind you to tweet about our event with the hashtag jab20 and um, still the possibility is open to send us send us our selfies in front of your computers just uh, tag them with the hashtag j selfie and uh, i will not forget to um, encourage you to use our donate button on the jmbeyond.org website um, to help us uh, due to some cancellation fees for our face-to-face -face, um, conference in Lisbon. And now I'll um, give over to Adam, who helps us uh, learn about more to boost our sales on online stores. Um, have a good uh, session, please. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for, I've been watching the uh, sessions all day and I've uh, learned a tremendous amount. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about is uh, really um, some principles, some ideas that can be applied really towards any platform um, that is selling something, whether it's an idea, a product, a service, a membership, uh, something which these days um, it's more about uh, a, a website that, um, that, compels the user to take some sort of action. Um, but uh, the biggest thing is uh, the reason why I like talking about this topic is because there's a lot of people out there that don't realize how powerful Joomla is and even Joomla Core itself and all the things it can do. I was watching some earlier sessions um, with uh, custom fields and those that know me uh, know that um, you know custom fields is pretty much my life when it comes to building these sites out. So the idea of this presentation is going to be geared more uh, towards showing you some of the different things that have been done uh, with Joomla um, and primarily with J2 Store. Um, I do have some older clients that are still using Virtue Mart, uh, uh, which I was uh, built a lot of sites on in the very beginning. Um, but the reason I like uh, J2 Store is because it uses the Joomla core uh, very intimately by sharing the items with articles. And so just to kind of give you a little, um, a little background about myself, um, originally from Los Angeles, California, and um, currently live in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I first got involved uh, with Joomla back in 2010, uh, just looking to uh, look for a quick way to make a lot of money. And at the time we heard that uh, all you had to do is just put up a website and sell some stuff and everybody in the world's gonna find out about it. And uh, obviously it, uh, it, it's a lot more complicated than that, but I didn't know what I didn't know at the time. And so, I had no prior coding or development knowledge. I come from sales and marketing, uh, but I found that I loved I loved the the challenge of having to learn something new and being able to take what uh, what I would normally do in person, be able to transfer it online. So I started um, in uh, in the good old days, um, and I say that tongue in cheek at 1.5 in Virtue Mart. And, um, and so what started as a side project, as an online store, ended up opening a whole new career path. And uh, now I help clients that were just like me when I started uh, 10 years ago, um, be able to use some of the latest modern UI UX principles and uh, e-commerce tactics um, to make sure that their sites, which just in this case happen to be Joomla sites, uh, stay competitive in a marketplace uh, that has lots of very strong competitors in this space. So I'm gonna be doing something that I don't normally do, which is I'm gonna be covering a lot of stuff over the next uh, 30 minutes or 40 minutes or so. Um, and I'm gonna be doing my hardest to try and avoid getting too deep into the details. So if there's anything in here that you, uh, that you connect with, that you love, that you wanna know how it, how it happened, how we did this, by all means, um, reach out to me, contact me. Uh, anybody that knows me knows that I have no problem helping anybody 
that has a question. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm a firm believer that the strength of, uh, of ourselves is also the strength of all of us. And that uh, in order for us to be able to um, uh, to live and thrive uh, for the next five, 10 years, we have to have a strong community. And that means that we have to have a community that really is pushing uh, Joomla, whether it's, uh, whether it's uh, Joomla 3, Joomla 4, or beyond uh, to its limits and being able to push it as far and hard as we can. And so with that being said, some of the things we're gonna be covering today, um, and I'm just gonna jump through uh, this very quickly but the bottom line is is uh, like we talked about i'll be focusing on details and make effective e-commerce stores rather than the details of how to do it it's going to be what it is so if there's anything that that can help you be able to uh, convert uh, one or two additional sales a day or a week or a month or whatever uh, it is then this was a very uh, beneficial uh, presentation for you and the bottom line is is in today's e-commerce um, uh, marketplace with all the different uh, apps development uh, developers that are that are building it's all about micro experiences it's about really focusing in on one certain uh, aspect and making sure that it is a very smooth clean transition and allows the shopper to really have a great experience and if you string together enough of those then what happens is is what they talk about is uh, is you start to uh, increase your conversions and sales, which means that you're not having to spend more money to get traffic to your site to increase your sales, which helps your bottom line. And so uh, my contact information can be found at the end of this presentation, as well as the different extensions that have been used in some of these examples. Um, and you might be surprised at how short that list really is. So um, some of the items that we're going to be covering is um, we're gonna be covering home pages, some of the home pages uh, for some of the projects that we've worked on, uh, product category pages, detail pages. I can go down and believe it or not, I am going to try and cover uh, almost all of these items. Um, and for those of you that um, are watching this live, of course, this will be recorded so you can slow this down and actually um, really uncover uh, some things we may just end up um, running through. And so uh, with that being said, we're gonna jump into the home pages. These are a couple examples. And as I look through them, I can, I can look at them and say that, that uh, with the exception of some of the uh, testimonial review modules, everything else that's on these home pages is all core Joomla. Now there are layout overrides, module overrides, and so on. But most of most of the items in my, our projects are done in articles with lots of custom fields, and um, there is no module that gets set up on our site that is not heavily modified uh, with layout overrides, um, template overrides, and so on. And so what you are seeing with all these is that really uh, you don't want necessarily want to have a slider um, at the top like we used to five, 10 years ago. Um, really, you want to have a, a, a very specific driven message that, uh, that compels a call to action, something that's going to help lead them down the path that will eventually lead them to a sale. And then underneath the hero image at the top, you want to be able to have some easily identifiable uh, uh, categories uh, that can help them navigate uh, any featured products below that and so on and so forth and at the same time you also want to make it very intuitive make it very easy for them to find the information including any supporting blogs that you may have to help support not just the sale of the product but also um, you know the, your overall brand to be able to uh, build some brand loyal followers all right, so um, going on to the next slide. This is, uh, we want to start off with uh, some customer coupon codes, which at the very end, I did a short video of one of these sites live, so you can actually see the interaction more than just some screenshots. But with the, what, what I want to be able to emphasize is that if you look in the upper right corner of the very first image here, there's a, uh, a get 10% off um, a coupon offer, which I never really understood until I understood it, why it was there. And the idea isn't just to 
um, you know, give away 10% uh, just on anything. The idea is that we want to get their information and not just these days get their information um, uh, for an email list. We want we want to get the sale. And so we know now that if we send them an email with the coupon code in there, that there's too much friction involved. They have to wait for the email to show up. And we have to hope that between now and whenever that email hits their inbox, that nothing catastrophic happens, such as they get distracted uh, with some cat video on YouTube or the, the wife comes home or their dog you know, bites them, um, whatever the reason is. So we want to be able to capture them. They come to the, They came to that site for a reason. And if it's a um, highly functional um, a website that is driving lots of revenue. The odds are is that they're also spending money on ad uh, ad spend. You don't want to just spend money to have them come to the site and then only go halfway. So by having uh, something like this, when they click on that button in the upper right corner, they enter their email address. It then uh, takes them to something like on the second screen, which is a different project, but they get a message that pops up that tells them that their discounts have been applied and um, and that they're ready to go. And so now they have something to lose uh, by leaving the site rather than uh, something possibly to gain. And we all know that people are mo more motivated by the fear of loss than they are by the chance of gain. And so um, these are some of the uh, some of the tactics from early on that can help convert some of these customers um, or potential customers into actual customers. And so this is just one of, uh, of many um, uh, uh, strategies to help uh, be able to increase your sales without having to increase your marketing budget, okay? So now we go to the next slide. And uh, these are some other micro experiences. Uh, this is another client, uh, the first screen, where uh, he wanted us to build him a, a um, uh, uh, a guide, a customer guided tour when they first uh, log in and they go to their dashboard that kind of shows them where everything's at. So they, they have a better understanding of what all these different charts and graphs mean for them. Um, and then on the other image here, uh, on this shopping cart, uh, we've added a couple different items. One is a free shipping progress bar, depending on how the store's set up. Um, a lot of clients, um, uh, we'll have a minimum, uh, whether it's uh, $50, $100, uh, $30 in some cases, in order to qualify for free shipping. And so what this progress bar does is it lets them know, uh, number one, you're almost at free shipping. And so, uh, hey, you're only $4.50 away. Um, and then, but we don't want to get them distracted. We want to keep them on the path because if they added it to the to the cart, that means they're already going in the direction we want. We don't want to send them somewhere else. So directly underneath that progress bar is now a uh, an upsell offer um, based on, it's based on each product. So we can go in on the back end of one of the apps that we created and be able to actually say that for when somebody goes to product A, um, if they add product A to the cart, then offer product B, C, D, however many products at a specific discount. And, and but it can only be, a, uh, that discount can only be applied if they add it in the cart. So it's not available anywhere else. And so it's a way of increasing the, the cart amount and the average order sale um, without having to take them off the, the, the yellow brick road. And so when they add something to the cart now, it makes it easier. If there's a $10 item that's in the cart, and they only need $9 to get free shipping, then the odds are is that you're gonna end up um, getting a higher order amount because you made it so easy for them to get above that minimum order amount. And as a general rule of thumb, whatever the dollar amount is of the product that they added to the cart originally, you, tr you wanna try and not go beyond 30 to 35% of that dollar amount when you're giving them an upsell offer. Otherwise, they have to think too hard. So if something costs $100, 
then try not to offer any upsell item that's more than $25, $30, $35 at the max. Otherwise, uh, it starts to not look like a great deal. Um, it's when you go to the grocery store and you're going through the checkout line, they, they aren't trying to sell you a TV or a CD player. They're selling you uh, $2 bags of chips. They're selling you, you know, $5 little flashlights. They're selling you things that you don't think about that you just throw in the cart on the way to the checkout anyways. And so that's the general idea of this. And that's why these two work very well hand in hand together. One lets them know that there's a, be a bigger benefit if they uh, add something and the other gives them the actual item that they can add. Um, so I'm way behind schedule. So I'm gonna jump through some of these quickly. And um, if any of you have any questions, we can definitely uh, answer them at the end. This is another client. Um, this is also one where if a product's out of stock, doesn't mean that you um, are going to lose out on the opportunity altogether. In this case, uh, when a product's out of stock, we can have it automatically shift to an out of stock email notification form. So that way, when somebody goes and they wanna buy this product, they enter their email address. And the moment the inventory gets switched above zero, then an automatic email gets sent out to anybody that filled out this form that lets them know it's back in stock. No work on the client's part. All we have to do is just set up the email at the beginning and set this form up and the system takes care of the rest. And, uh, and then also on that same client, uh, she ran out of inventory and wanted to start pre-selling them before the new inventory came in. And so the only difference really with a pre-sale versus a regular sale is just letting them know that it's not going to get shipped right away and kind of giving them an estimated date range. And then on the, on the emails and in the checkout and being able to add additional information that lets them know that uh, that product is not going to get shipped until whatever the date is that they plan on it. And so, um, and moving along, this is another uh, project. Um, this is actually a holiday theme that when we switch it um, uh, to, in this case, it was Memorial Day, um, that uh, what ends up happening is it puts an American flag behind the logo automatically. And uh, I set this up the template uh, XML file and using the same repeatable field uh, structure that we use for custom uh, custom fields. Um, but by doing it this way, we were able to, um, uh, to create multiple holidays during the course of the year and then be able to use the repeatable field function to say for Memorial Day, start this holiday on uh, May 20th and end it on May 31st. And, and then we have custom CSS sheets for each, uh, each holiday that get triggered based on, on the, uh, the date range. And so the client just has to go at the beginning of the year and say for this holiday, uh, set this date range and for Thanksgiving and for Christmas and this. And then you know, we can create multiple themes that then can be used automatically. And so as we see here in some of the um, Examples at the very top, we even have um, a shop now button that when they click on it, that takes them back to the promo page, uh, automatically applies the discount code uh, that we saw earlier. And then um, also uh, what we see down here in the bottom right are, are different section categories that get changed during the holidays to reflect that particular holiday. Um, and so, uh, we built out quite a few different themes that can help um, clients during the course of the year make it seem like they have a huge team working in the background, even if they don't. And so um, moving through here, also having a very strong checkout page, uh, that's kind of a closer and a deal is, it, you know, you can take them through the entire process, but if you don't have a strong checkout page, you're gonna lose them at the very end. And a strong checkout page needs to have the ability to port, uh, portray uh, that it's a professional site, it's a high-end site, and also trust uh, trust factors and, and so on and so forth. And also very easy and intuitive. Um, so we're gonna go to the next slide here. Also, one of the biggest things that you'll lose people on in the checkout is if you don't offer a guest checkout option. And the, and the reality is the difference between a regular checkout and a guest checkout is uh, is the difference of a password. So in a lot of clients' cases, what we end up doing is if the customer does not want to um, uh, 
create a password, we, we will automatically create a random password in the background as they go through. So they're actually a regular, uh, it's a regular checkout that is made to look like a guest checkout. But by doing this, it's creating an account history for the customer. So later on when they want to go and they want to view their, their order history and so on, it gives them the ability to do it uh, because it's not a guest checkout. And uh, Moving through, uh, you know, quant uh, quantity discounts for wholesale accounts or even just in general help uh, help sell uh, more quantity like what we see here. Um, having store locators, whether it's for wholesalers or if you have multiple locations, um, that also helps uh, uh, promote, uh, you know, in-person sales and uh, having an affiliate program. These are all done using Joomla. Uh, this is actually Joomla that which I did not include at the very end um, now that I'm going through this. Uh, but this is their affiliate program that, um, that we've had very good success with. Um, and uh, these are some uh, different customer account pages. And depending on the client, what they're looking for, uh, they can look all sorts. But the bottom line is we want to make it very easy and intuitive for, uh, for, uh, for you know, store owners to be able to have their, uh, their customers, just like we do on Amazon or any other big e-commerce platform, we know exactly where to go to change our credit cards and addresses and, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and so this is a order history page, an example of some modifications we've done where they can order that same order again. They can view the order. They can print the receipt, everything right, uh, right there online, right in front of them. And um, here's a, an example of an order detail page where um, two different products got shipped out to the customer. It's got the tracking number on there. It's got the, uh, the actual uh uh, shipping uh, status information that's tied directly into, in this case, UPS. So that way they don't have to call in and ask where their product is. They can see if it's been delivered, if it's on its way, when it's going to get there. And uh, it saves a lot of additional expense on the customer service side. Um, and then now we're going, uh, uh, these are some modifications on the address page to make it easy for them to be able to, um, in this case, if it's a uh, auto ship for products, they can use uh, the actual address pages to update their upcoming auto ship. Um, the first screen here, the first image, which is the authorized uh, plugin that we've modified, um, where it allows them to not only store their payments um, without storing their credit card numbers on the site, but it also uh, allows them to update their subscription with a new credit card without having to call in or, uh, or dance, uh, dance through any hoops or challenges. Now, I know some countries um, are very particular about this, um, but if you're uh, not in one of those countries that allows you uh, to, to do uh, items like this, uh, this just makes the experience much easier uh, and removes additional friction from customers from buying again. Um, and let's see here. Next uh, screen here is actually uh, some a product subscription management page, something that's easy for customers to be able to add uh, auto ship products to be shipped out monthly or bi-monthly or every three months um, and to edit, remove them, skip. What, what you'll find is that the more you empower the customer to give them options, the less that they want to actually use them. They just want to know that they have the ability to do so. When you don't give them options, they get upset. And so they want to call in and say, you know, cancel my subscription. And half of that may not even be because of the subscription more than the fact that they didn't have the ability to do it themselves. And once we, we've uh, built this into some of our clients that have product subscription um, uh, systems, um, their att the attrition rate of customers that were dropping went down drastically. It was, it was very, very noticeable. Uh, so going through, um, here is uh, I th us. I think we've already done this one. We're going to Go to the next one. Um, and the next is now kind of getting in. Also, one of the things I love doing is I love finding creative ways of using something that a lot of people don't really use as much in Joomla, which is tags. See, what you're looking at is in the first screen, these are actually, each one of these designs is actually a Joomla tag. 
these tags, uh, when you click on one, actually then redirects to, in this case, a, a, a J2 store tag category page that shows any of the products that have this particular tag associated with them, which in this case happens to be a design. So for our friends over on the other side of the pond, uh, enough of the Memorial Day stuff, we decided to, to in this uh, image, wanted to do the Union Jack design. And so the beauty is, is that somebody can, we can run a promotion for a certain holiday, but and, and with this project here, depending on certain designs, we can select certain designs because the each product has the tags associated with them. Uh, um, and so um, this is also another example from another project where in this case, some of the active ingredients in the products um, are some of these uh, tags on the left side. And when you click on one of these, then it opens up the actual tag product and it shows any related products or articles that are related to that that are attached to each other using that same tag. So there's a lot of, of amazing things that we can use in order to connect more than one item in, in the Joomla uh, system uh, to, and using core products to, uh, to do it. Uh, this is also another example um, on the right. You'll see there's some products that are offered next to an article. This is based on, on it, when an ed somebody goes in to edit this article, they're able to click on the edit button, add a tag. They can actually add specific product tags, uh, in this case, a com tag, and it will then automatically show the com product on the right side of the article and down below, like we see on the right image. And so simply selecting a specific tag for the, these products can now add these products to that article. So when you're writing an article that may, uh, may be specific, let's say it's about kids and exercise, then they can add the tags for the kids' products on the side. So the one article is helping sell the products and vice versa. And um, so moving along, and we are almost... Uh, almost uh, uh, getting caught back up. These are some product category pages. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, depending on the clients and what they need and, and you know, what the project dictates. Um, and let's see here, uh, product detail pages. As we can see, uh, some of these product detail pages can be very, very long. And I can tell you from looking at them that Almost every one of these product detail pages is made up of uh, custom fields from uh, Joomla articles. Since J2 Store attaches the product to the article, they're able to use these custom fields in order to, uh, for whatever it is that we need. And, um, and they can go all the way down the page. And we're gonna cover that in a little bit more detail. Um, but the first image on the left um, th this one actually has over 91, 92 different variations, um, and each variation has uh, its own attributes, uh, whether it's a, a design option or a background option. And so how do you display 91 different options without overloading them? And so as you can see, uh, we actually um, have it in a, a slick slider with a left and right arrow that they can slide through and be able to select the different designs without overwhelming them. And when they select on one of the designs, then depending on what attributes are attached to that design, then it shows up underneath and they go through the checkout process. Um, and so continuing on, um, you know, how do you, uh, how do we uh, be, you know, take uh, a product that, that uh, in this case, a physical product that may have multiple variations like a five, a 15 and a 30 pack and all, and, and that somebody may wanna buy one time versus being able to um, offer them a subscription every month, two month, three month. And so here is another um, intuitive way to uh, let customers be able to select that and move on uh, and and then this is another item is to make it very easy to manage, giving the store owner the ability to jump in there and make changes as they need. And we'll show this uh, in just a, a, a couple minutes uh, doing a, uh, 
a, a live walkthrough through this. Um, and, uh, and also transactional emails, making sure your branding is in order and making sure that everything is clear and defined for the customer and professional looking and that the same experience they have um, on the store is carried over into any of the transactional emails, abandoned cart emails, email sequences, um, and so on and so forth. So at this point, I believe uh, I'm going to have uh, the team now play a short 10 minute video um, and then uh, that will kind of show you a live uh, interaction as an administrator and before an administrator. Um, and then the only reason why I did this video is because I know that I would go off the tracks and, uh, and, and go down and get deep in the weeds. This is going to keep me on us and keep us on track. So without further ado, guys, if you guys can, uh, can play that video, that would be super awesome. Hi there. In this brief short video, we're going to be going over some of the dynamics um, that are very difficult to actually display through images. So we're going to actually do this short video clip to show uh, all the the various functions that are happening on a uh, on a well put together product page. And so uh, first thing we'll notice is before I log in, uh, two things. One, the login icon up here. Uh, says login, um, which lets me or any user know that they're not logged in, because why would it say that if they're logged in? Um, so when I do that, it automatically hovers down and it doesn't move away, which can get annoying if you're trying to enter a username or password. Um, and then also using the Source Coast um, uh, extension to allow uh, customers to link their Facebook, Twitter, Google. Um, some of my other clients have Amazon, uh, other uh, social media channels that they can link to uh, to make it easier for not just this time around, but in the future without having to remember all this. But in this case, um, here is a login. But before we do that, we're going to look up here in the upper right corner because the moment that I log in, this guy over here is going to be gone because this is only for new customers. We're not looking at just giving away discounts for the sake of it that actually devalues the, the the brand in some ways but what we're looking to do is capture new new customers new leads whatever it is that your website's main purpose function is and so in this case um, somebody's uh, come to the website they're looking around they're somewhat interested they see this in the upper corner they click on there well, I get 10% off my first order and they don't even ask me for my name. Most, I can give them my email for that. And so let's just go ahead and give a fake email, right? We're going to be smart. I don't want to give them my real email, um, but I want to get that discount. So what happens is uh, they click on get my discount. Now, I really don't care if they give me the right email address at this point or not. And the reason being is that I'm not in the business of collecting email uh, accounts if I can go after the sale. And you know, I think a lot of times clients get so focused on building their, their customer list or their lead list that they forget that the purpose of having that list is to sell them a product, service, idea, concept, whatever it is that you're using this list for. So it, by default, the beauty of this is that Right now, their discount's been applied, which means that in order for them to use this discount, they have to go through the checkout, which means I'm going to get their real email address, I'm going to get their real name, I'm going to get all their information, and most importantly, I'm going to get the sale. And because of that is why I don't need to know all the rest of their information. What I really am going for is the sale and also, in this case now, uh, the fear of loss. Because if they leave, they're now leaving a discount on the table versus having to wait in their inbox, look for an email. Then they get distracted. Their wife comes home, yells at them. Their kids are yelling at them. Uh, the dog bites them and... You know, all of a sudden buying something, going to the checkout isn't as exciting as it was 10 minutes ago. So they click on shop now. We make it easy. We take them right to a product category page. And here they are. They can go and scroll down in this particular case. But we're going to go ahead and uh, let's go focus sport. Okay. 
And so we're on this page and we look down and we can see it's got a lot of stuff going on, uh, including this drop down menu here that shows up once it gets uh, past the main section. In this case, it kind of lets them know because this is a pretty long page with a lot of information designed to essentially uh, sell them on the product and um, get good SEO value um, and, you know, it, to be able to compete in today's marketplace, you have to be able to do more than just put up a couple product pictures, uh, some SKUs, uh, price, and a short product description. And so as you scroll down, this can actually take you, take them. They can jump around very easily, go back to where they want to go to. Um, and if you notice that bar scrolls uh, disappears as soon as they get up here and they scroll down again, it pops up. They want to go add to the cart takes them right back to the top here and so everything is very uh, very intuitive or at least as much as I like to think that it is but now let's go log in and show some of the front end editing and so if you notice the login page uh, doesn't take them back to their main account or dashboard we, we got them on the on the product page. We want them to stay on the product page, um, whether they're logged in as a customer or not. Now, because I'm logged in as an admin and I also happen to be in the wholesale group, if you notice first off that uh, the prices have changed from the pr previous screen because I'm in a different user group. And the beautiful part about J2 Store is that it gives you the ability to use Joomla user groups to create as many different um, pricing um, items for each user group as you'd like and so uh, somebody that's uh, logged in could have a different price than somebody that is not logged in so and and in doing so admins um, investors into a project can have different pricing than uh, than even a registered user but if we scroll down the the beauty of this part of it is that now there's an edit product button that's right here and in this case, this particular product, the way it was structured was in order to allow the customer to be able to order a five pack, 15 and 30, which in J2 store would be no problem. But then to be able to also offer the one time sale for a five pack, 15 or, uh, or 30, but then also a subscription version that each has the ability um, to choose a subscription in every one month, every two and three, the easiest course of action that we found was actually creating six separate products for this. Now, if you have a large store, this would not be practical, but in this case, they have 13, 15 um, main product SKUs as a whole. And so by doing this, uh, it gives us more flexibility in each one. So uh, this is actually six different SKUs, a five pack, a 15 and a 30 that are one time single product sales. And then there's an additional five pack subscription, uh, 15 pack subscription and 30 pack subscription. And, um, and the reason why I point this out is because if you need to edit the price on the five pack, how do you know which one you're going to edit? You have to go through the back end. You have to go through one or two different articles to find it. And for a store owner, if you're building this for somebody else, uh, we need to make it as intuitive as possible because the more that they can, can go out and manage the site on their own, the more they own this, then they start going through and they start saying, hey, I would love to be able to do this and let's do this. And what does that mean for you as a developer? Well, it means more work, but it also means that they're taking a more active role, which means that, uh, you know, uh, everything works together. And by them being more active, uh, usually that's going to translate to more sales. And it just, it helps everybody. It's a win-win for everybody. So um, when we go to the edit button now, I click on the edit button. Okay. There are, uh, it actually shows me uh, if I want to edit the five pack, 15, 30 single uh, one time uh, product SKUs or the auto ship versions, uh, or I can edit the actual parent page itself, which is the one that we're looking at that kind of ties them all together. And so if I want to edit the main product page here that can that controls the content and everything else, then I'm going to click on this uh, edit this page. And as you can see, I'm on the front end and I'm able to do all the same things that we can do on the back end, um, including updating 
products, product images, being able to full function, being able to uh, create new um, and new image categories, up, upload, remove, resize, whatever it is that we need to do. Um, and then so as we move forward, we go to the product um, main tab, which is actually a custom field section that controls all of the content that's on this page, or at least the majority of it. And so um, these are the FAQs that we saw uh, earlier going down the page, the question and the answer. And, um, and this is what really, this, these two sections, these are repeatable fields, but these were created um, to help tie together all six products into one. So that way that, that main page knows that the five pack is a J2 store uh, item and which item it's this product ID, uh, the 15 pack is this product ID and so on, same for the subscription version. And I'm not going to get into the details on the coding side, but the beautiful part about this is that other than J2 Store, there's very few other outside third-party extensions that are really needed to put together a complete e-commerce package because with all the different custom fields that can be used, if you can master that and use layout overrides, then you can really mold it to do whatever it is that you want. And so uh, the description image right here, uh, that is found here, the product tagline, the flavor, the flavor image that we saw at the front, the color, um, and then this is the table of nutrition. It's also another repeatable field. And so all of these can be controlled on the front end uh, by a store manager, administrator, store owner without having to log into the back end at all, which makes it a lot easier and a better experience for them, which means they don't need to go look elsewhere or uh, they, they read an article about, um, you know, the latest and greatest e-commerce platform that's out there because they have everything they need. They have uh, an amazing product page. They can edit anything that they need at any moment and then they're not having to tie me up to go change an image now when they contact me it's for stuff that helps uh, helps make my brain work it, it, it challenges me it, it adds additional value to the product um, so it's uh, it's really a win-win for everybody uh, and then of course they could go to the j2 store cart tab which looks similar to what you would see in the back end um, editing uh, everything from the pricing to uh, advanced pricing, to inventory, to images, uh, the shipping options, including third-party apps, um, and so on and so forth. And so all of these can be controlled directly from the front end, uh, including tags, categories, all the normal stuff that you would normally control in an article. Video is over. Okay. You can just share your, yeah, you are now live. Okay. So uh, hopefully um, uh, it gave you a better idea of, uh, of some of the complexity that's involved, but also some of the beauty of everything that, uh, that Joomla can do. And um, for those that know me, I try and use as much of Joomla core as possible um, and, and try and find different ways of uh, being able to, um, you know, get creative with it and and, uh, and and have clients have the projects that separate them from their competitors. Uh, as you can see from the screen, um, I did forget to add one, which was the uh, Joomla That affiliate program component. But everything else, primarily, um, you know, the Fabric AR is used for the wholesale um, forms. Uh, source Coast is for the login. Uh, the DJ extension, DJ reviews is for the product reviews. And a bulk of the heavy lifting is done by J2 Store and Joomla. So for uh, anybody that has any questions after this, you're more than welcome to reach out to me, email me, uh, uh, text uh, you know slacks and uh, homing pigeon uh, whatever works for you guys um and uh and that's about it so i appreciate the time to share some of this uh with you and if there's any questions uh i don't know how much time we have left but whatever it is i'll uh, do the best i can yeah thank you very much adam for sharing your knowledge in terms of uh online shops um uh, we have uh question uh, regarding usl cost 
SQL custom fields. Mm -hmm. if you can uh, if you can use it uh, for just go through the chat. Have you ever thought about using SQL custom fields so they can use only certain tags for certain functions? I have. Um, you know, I find that I try and use whatever I think is the best. Not it doesn't always turn out that way for the best tool for the job, but um, I find that sometimes using the um, the the, the SQL um, custom field is sometimes going hunting for rabbits with a bazooka uh, when sometimes just. Uh, uh, a, a more basic maybe text uh, input uh, or list type function. But what I really have found has made a big difference is the repeatable custom fields and to be able to uh, to use those to to uh, uh, actually um, create a lot of the different options and to be able to uh, create multiple versions of that is super powerful and gives us the ability to um, to really uh, not have to worry um, about being able to um, uh, you know to create a lot of different um, uh, you know extensions or modules or plugins um, like some of the previous presentations um, earlier today uh, custom fields is really revolutionary and changed um, a lot of the workflow and then uh, repeatable custom fields uh, made an even bigger difference and so uh, hopefully that answers that question yeah I think so yeah just uh, as a feedback learned a lot that I have to try out is from one user so um, thanks for your inspiration and uh, thanks for sharing your knowledge um, sure thank, thank you, you very much. Bye-bye.